Welcome back to VMware Cloud Foundation Transformed. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here at the keynote intro segment. Chris Prasad, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the VCF division. The man in charge of VCF, the flagship, the crown jewel of the new VMware, Broadcom VMware, great to see you. Thanks for coming on, kicking yeah. off the program. Yeah, great thank line. you for having me. So right now everyone wants to know how things are going post VMware with Broadcom combination, uh, obviously with a lot of fanfare and press and content. A lot of people are saying, okay, what's going on? The dust is settling, yep. the fog is lifting, we're seeing clear visibility. VCF is, is your, <laughs> your area, you're running the show there. What's going on? Give us the update. What's it like with Broadcom VMware? How'd that go? Yeah, it has been, uh, what, um, seven, eight months since the acquisition happened. Uh, we were uh, discussing the integration and the acquisition at uh, last Explore, uh, John, and um, you know, it has gone really well. I mean, it, it has been a whirlwind you know, kind of activities, but uh, we have been able to do um, significant transformation on the product side, as well as on the go-to-market side as part of the integration, uh, following what the customers have been asking us truthfully for many years yeah. at VMware, and we have not been able to execute at the pace that we have been able to execute in Broadcom. The main reason for that is, you know, the, at the, the core value of Broadcom brings to the table is all around innovation. Mm -hmm. You know, Hawk has around 26 divisions, yeah. and each of the division is measured by innovate and be the category leader in their space. It's, a, it's yeah. very simple. And uh, that's what he's doing with uh, VMware. So we have been able to focus. Uh, he has been giving us a lot of support. And as a result, we have been able to make a lot of changes very fast. Yeah. And then customers are, uh, and analysts have been very surprised by yeah. how fast we have been moving. Yeah, we've been we've been uh, very complimentary on some of the progress served with the Cube research team, but also when the when the deal happened, you know, we saw it and we we, we kind of predicted it, but also Hawk Tan said what he was going to do, and he kind of didn't waver. We knew it would be kind of changes would be dramatic, obviously mm -hmm. with the acquisition uh, and the asset there. But the Broadcom business, as you mentioned, has multiple divisions, but the business is good. The 10x stock split yep. the, on the semiconductor side, on the chip side, they got they're really primed in with the with the AI generation. So clearly on Broadcom management wide, they got the big chops. VMware is the crown jewel on the software that adds yes. to the software portfolio. And VCF really is going to be that cloud infrastructure. We're going to hear from your leaders on your team yes. in, in, in this program. So I want to get I want to get the state of the union mm -hmm. from from your standpoint because a lot of things happened. Mm -hmm. There's some clarity. There's some simplicity. There's been changes. Yep. Can you take us through what the state of the union is with the VCF, the VMware Cloud Foundation Group? What's new? What happened? What is now settled? Let me just start with uh, what Hawk said uh, in the earnings call last week. The integration is going very well, and you know the VMware uh, is starting to kick in as a material part of the Broadcom business. And within that, you know, if you, I want to take you back to what customers have been asking us to do as part of VMware. The number one thing that customers have been telling us is that they are starting to take a much more balanced approach uh, to their cloud journey. You know, five years ago, you know, there was a big push to, hey, public cloud first. You know, everything was moving to the public cloud. And that has now changed significantly. Customers are taking a much more balanced approach, keep some workloads on-prem where it makes sense, take others to the public cloud. And so really a hybrid model is what customers have been uh, focused on. And that's where yeah. they want our solutions to enable them to deploy that uh, infrastructure model for their IT. Mm -hmm. And so our focus has been really to deliver a cloud platform to the customers that you can run on-prem, you can run with service providers or the hyperscalers so that customers can have a managed environment coming from the yeah. public clouds and then have their own private cloud that connects to each other with the same uh, foundation underneath it. You know, it's interesting, you know, years ago, hybrid cloud was pretty obvious. Yeah. VMware was playing in that, as was others. Public cloud's getting all the attention. Post COVID, market obviously was seeing some hybrid and you guys had the edge. That was pretty obvious too. Yeah. We all saw that distributed that computing paradigm. But generative AI, two, two and a half years ago, really kind of kicked in the new category. Yeah. Which shows that private AI, which we're going to hear from Chris Wolf about, which he, he kind of started that movement three years ago with Ragu on your team, actually, yeah. when it all was incubated. 
was not even on the radar. And mm -hmm. so what happened between then and now is that it, there's now a new normal. Yep. If you're either running full cloud operations on premise and edge in public cloud, that is VCF from what we're hearing. Right. Is that how you guys see it? And then what did you guys do to change that? Because there's going to be two types of companies. Mm. Companies running full cloud with generative AI applications in the future mm. and those that aren't. Yep. And the ones that aren't probably won't be as successful as the ones would, will be table stakes. What has changed in that kind of hybrid to full gen AI prerequisite yep. infrastructure? that people are now building. What is yeah, before I go to the Gen AI, which is the latest type of workload that we want to run, um, you know, one of the, the, the feedback elements from our customers was it was very hard to do business with VMware. And the reason was because our go-to-market and our part, product portfolio was very complex. We had literally 9,000 SKUs <laughs> in our portfolio. Yeah. And as part of the Broadcom changes, we have simplified it and again, based on what customers want to do, which is to have a, an offering, which is a cloud platform yep. that they can deploy on-prem and in the cloud, we have vastly simplified the product portfolio with a private cloud offering, which is VCF, that can also be deployed in the public cloud. And then we have uh, all the way down to uh, hypervisor that customers want to deploy for a server virtualization. So we have a product portfolio now that customers who want to be in the cloud world can deploy VCF and get a consistent experience whether they are on-premise or in the public cloud, or if they are a small customer who is in the commercial space and they just want a vSphere server virtualization software, they can get access to that. And so we vastly simplified the portfolio, that's number one. Number two is that we also announced portability of our license which means that you can take a license that you're running on-prem and take it to the public cloud or to one of the service providers. And to enable that, we also are now standardized on subscription because as you know, the cloud model is all based on subscription. So the new offerings from Broadcom VMware is all subscription based. And that allows portability for customers who are on VCF to take a workload that is running on-prem, move it to the cloud and take the license with them. So that was the, the second biggest change that we made. Let's unpack the licenses, but let's yep. first put, a, put, a, put a, uh, encapsulate the product. VCF essentially all the, the key products, you know, vSAN, NSX, all, those, all the good stuff into one package. Yeah. You get everything, it, basically. Yeah, I mean, the, the way to think about it is, it is a platform that you can run a cloud operating model on. And that includes a compute, network, storage, and management all tied together, fully integrated as a platform. Yep. So it is not a commercial bundle. It's really a well-architected solution for running a cloud. Yep. And, and something that you can run on-premise and also on the hyperscalers and with all our service provider. Yeah, we're going to hear about the whole partner thing. Okay, so basically it's like turnkey VM where everything in the box pretty much. Correct. Without oversimplifying it. Yes. Okay, so let's get into the license because this has been the big conversation. So the confusion in the product gets simplified. The licenses were some perpetual forever. Yep. Some were you know, freebies out there, they're gone. Yep. So okay, you rein that in. Take us through the impact of the subscription. To unpack why the subscription, how does it work, and what does the portability mean to the customer? Yep. Is it a price increase? Is only buy what you use. Take us through all that because there's a lot of confusion there. Yeah, so the, the, the main change, and, and look, in, in VMware we have been talking about uh, moving our portfolio to subscription uh, for the last couple of years. So we have been telling customers that, hey, for a cloud model to be really effective and for us to be uh, supporting a portability to the cloud, um, we have to support a subscription model. So that that's something that we have talked about mm -hmm. for years and now we are actually making it happen with the new portfolio lineup that we have. So all the products now in the, in the new lineup are subscription only. Obviously we support customers who are on perpetual, uh, you know, who have support contracts with us, we are fully supporting them, but anything new that you buy from us uh, will be su subscription oriented. All right, great, great stuff, great clarity, and we're going to hear a lot more at VMware Explorer, so stay tuned, folks, on that. Uh, I want to dig into the rationale and some of the, the decisions you guys made on both the packaging of the product in terms of the, the VCF as the core, and then uh, the licensing and the pricing and the subscription. Mm -hmm. From a customer standpoint, can you share um, the conversations? What were the drivers? What was the input into making those calls? Yeah. Uh, and what's been the reaction? And, and does it meet that whole broader set? How many customers are going to 
you're going to hit with the VCF and who's going to be on the VMware Foundation, kind of what happens and how does that settle? What's your, what's your view on this? What, yeah, first of all, I mean, there is, uh, you know, I've heard people talk about, hey, Broadcom is only focused on a uh, narrow subset of customers going forward. That is not the case. The Broadcom is supporting the entire base of VMware, the 350,000 customers that we always talk about. That is being supported. Now, out of that, um, customers who want to deploy a, a hybrid cloud, mm -hmm. both on the a private data center as well as uh, maybe connect to the public cloud, they choose VCF. Now we have other products in the portfolio. If they are a smaller customer who just wants server virtualization, they, they have access to that also. But the main thrust is to take care of customers who are really focused on uh, the private cloud, I would say the top 10,000 customers. So your are, division is, in, is hyper-focused on having that full package yep. for the top 10,000 enterprise and or customer base. Yeah, enable them to deploy a hybrid cloud with the private cloud, bring modernize yeah. their data center, deploy the private cloud, and then extend it to the public cloud. Chris, you've been on theCUBE many times over the years, and now with the new VMware kind of rolling out, mm -hmm. how would you put in perspective the this focus, because what do these customers look like? Can you share uh, insight into when you go look at these top 10,000 customers, what's the makeup? Are they mostly DevOps? Is it hybrid, full distributed computing? What are some of their goals? What's their current situation? How would you, how would you share what the topologies look like? What's the architecture? Where are the customers? Where, where are they right now? Yeah, well, what you see is a lot of customers um, wanting to move to the cloud, but they, you know, in the past few years, customers have been trying to do best of breed. They take best of breed technologies and they were trying to build the cloud platform themselves. And what they have found is that the TCO is not there, the resiliency is not there, the security is not there. And so they're really looking for a well-integrated cloud platform that they can take and deploy and modernize their infrastructure. And that's what we provide uh, with VCF. What's your vision as you look to the future? We've got VMware Explorer coming up, so we're going to hear more there. What's your vision for the division as you look at, you've got the, you got the, the Kubernetes cloud native, our architecture's growing, being prepared for Gen AI. Yeah. You got, we're going to hear from Chris Wolf with private AI. You've got the partner equation simplified, clear. Yeah. What's your vision to customers saying, VCF is going to be what to them? Yeah, look, first of all, I would say that uh, we have been moving very fast. Uh, since the acquisition and this week, actually this month, we have had two major uh, you know, releases that went out. First of all, the private AI uh, foundation that Chris Wolf is going to talk about later, uh, that became generally available uh, a couple of weeks back. And this week, we are announcing the next release of VCF. And, and so we have not been, in, in addition to all the changes, we have been innovating, <laughs> we have had significant releases come out, and at Explore, the whole focus will be on the roadmap for VCF. Where are we going next? There are some significant announcements that we'll make. I'm sure you'll be there and yep. uh, we'll have a lot of opportunity to talk yep. about it then. As we get into the program, last couple of questions I want to ask yep. you, if you could clear up anything out there and talk to the folks out there watching about VCF and what's going on, what would you say to them about VCF? What's the, if you're going to clear the air, set the agenda, what's the direction? What would you say? I mean, the, the number one thing I would say is, you know, communication is at the root of, you know, getting everybody aligned. And, and so we have been on the road. I've been personally on the road for yeah. uh, meeting with customers, you know, all the different continents and whatnot. And so uh, continuing to communicate, don't read everything in the press, right? And then uh, reach out to us. We are ready to sit down and talk through all the changes. Change is always yeah. hard. Uh, but again, yeah. um, over communicating is what is critical uh, during that time to stay alive. My final question for you, and I really appreciate you. I know you're super busy to come in and talk with us in this program. Um, my final question is, you've been a technologist, now you're the leading the group here, mm -hmm. you and Hawk Tan are putting this together. What, are, what about this new environment that's exciting with Generative AI? Because this infrastructure, this now VCF infrastructure you're rolling out, essentially private cloud across the enterprise and cloud, this is, this has to be ready for generative AI applications. We'll hear Correct. from Chris. Private AI is just uh, on ramp, in my opinion. Yep. That just highlights that data is valuable, and people are going to do that on prem. Yep. You guys, VMware, have managed workloads for decades. Yep. GPU is just another workload that's going to be factored in. But there's a bigger picture. Yep. As a technologist and now business leader, what does this Gen AI, Gen AI market mean as the apps come up? The infrastructure has to be stood up. Once that's done, 
we're going to see a whole new future. What does that look like? Because in three years, it's going to be a completely different world. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, the, you know, every application is going to have some Gen AI component integrated with it, some kind of inferencing that is happening behind the scenes that needs to be tied into the application. And so the, the infrastructure that they use for running their uh, applications have to keep up uh, with the new technologies that uh, they need to run. And so having the, the ability to run LLMs, and we did a lot of work, by the way, over the past uh, two, three years with NVIDIA, mm -hmm. uh, where we have really you know, integrated the GPUs and virtualized it as part of the VCF foundation, yeah. which enables us to then run all the LLMs as a service that they can integrate into the, into the customer applications. And so that's the work that we have done, and that's the main release that came out uh, earlier this month. As the next chapter of VMware uh, is written, with Broadcom, look at VCF, it's going to be a big part of it. That's your team. Thank you so much for coming on and kicking off the, yeah. the VMware train. Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you for uh, years of yeah. uh, we have been doing this yeah. and uh, look forward to seeing you at Explore. We're going to continue to document yeah. the story, but here we're going to talk about VMware Cloud Foundation transform a new era in private cloud innovation. It's happening here in theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. Mm -hmm.